Hi, my name is Peter and what I'd like to do is to introduce my home-built uh, homebrew CPU. It's modelled after the 6502. The only real difference is this has no decimal mode um, because the extra circuitry uh, I thought was unnecessary. Uh, it has, it is cycle exact as the original 6502. Um, it, so it's a 8 bit CPU, it runs at 1 megahertz. It has 54 instructions, as two, two instructions, I think, uh, from the decimal mode, so I did not use them. And um, it also has eight addressing modes out of 13 available. It has uh, two interrupts, one maskable and one non maskable. And it also has a 256 uh, kilobyte stack. The CPU is built using mostly TTL logic chips, AND gates, OR gates, XOR gates, and also bus buffers and 8 bit registers. Um, it's built using a backplane system uh, with these uh, uh, 96 pin DIN connectors which connect all the different cards together. Now um, we have one, two, three, four, five, six different cards and all these cards use this uh, perf board um, and cat5 wire uh, and all, the, all these uh, wires are actually soldered at the back. Now um, oh, I use this because it, these there's, there are too many logic chips um, in some of these uh, cards to be able to do a proper printed circuit board. And the reason why I chose to use um, very simple logic chips is because this is my first ever CPU and um, I wanted to learn uh, how a computer works. Uh, so I thought the best way is to actually build something. Uh, now this card here is responsible for turning the rest of the CPU into a computer. So it's got the RAM, it's got the ROM. Uh, now this EEPROM here is responsible for memory mapping. Um, now I've used that EEPROM because uh, it's versatile. If I want to change the memory map, all I have to do is uh, reburn the, the, the EEPROM here. This is a RAM, it's um, actually a 128 kilobyte chip but the top bit is actually grounded, so effectively it's on 64 kilobytes. And as this uses a 16-bit address bus, um, that is all it's capable of addressing. This here is uh, uh, an EE prom, and it holds uh, the, the simple operating system for this computer. Now, um, up here, we have the uh, timing logic, it's, it's very simple, it's just got a 2 megahertz crystal and then a few flip-flops which actually change the 2 megahertz into 3 1 megahertz um, signals which are offset. Uh, now here we have a type of HP matrix display. Uh, it's pretty cool. You can actually um, have not just zero to nine, but you can also have all the different hexadecimal symbols on there. Um, now here we have just simple uh, reset circuitry. And we'll move on to the next board. The next board here is basically what orchestrates uh, the CPU. It, it's the, um, what I like to call the control unit. And I'll just take it off here. Now the control unit, uh, basically it runs microcode. All the microcode is stored on these EEPROMs and then the logic up here runs the microcode. Now the logic up here is responsible, for instance, to cycle through the different uh, microcode instructions as um, the microcode instructions vary. They can, they can be as little as two clock cycles, or they can go all the way up to seven clock cycles. Um, there's also some logic here which actually can save cl a clock cycle if you're not um, crossing a, a page boundary. 
um, like the original 6502. Uh, we've got some uh, registers here, there for the instructions. And if we go back, these register, one of the top register here is connected to the, this uh, card here that piggybacks onto the main card. And this card here um, is responsible for the branching and also the interrupts. Now what happens is the instruction comes into here and depending on the status of the, of the status register and the actual branch, branching instruction, it will either um, change the, the instruction into a new instruction for branching or it will leave the, this card un, unmolested. So we have this card here and I'll just um, show you the next card. This card here has all the different registers. So for instance, the accumulator and also the X and Y registers. It's got the stack pointer uh, register there. And it's also got a lot of different buffers um, to control the, the interconnection between different buses because um, this is modeled after a 6502. So it has got four different internal buses. It's got the data bus. It's, uh, it has the um, two address buses, which is the, the 8 bit high and the 8 bit low byte of the address. And it also has another bus called the special bus, um, which really helps to uh, keep down the clock cycles. Okay, then after this, here we have a card which is really two different sections. This section here is a program counter. And this section here is uh, the status register. Now it looks very complex for a status, for a simple status register, but uh, I really could not simplify it any further because you can't just use a, a normal um, 8 bit register. The different bits have to be controlled separately. Um, now the program counter, it's got two sections. Um, you've got the uh, program counter, which is um, counts the low low byte, and then the program counter part that that uh, calculates the high byte. You can also send um, a an address into this um, counter, so you can do branching and uh, go to instructions. Um, so I'm going to take this card out, show you the back of it. The next card here is the ALU. So the ALU is responsible for all the different calculations. Um, it, it can do add addition, subtraction, it can shift left and it can shift right. And it can also do all the AND, OR and XOR um, instructions as well. And the card after that is, this is, this card here is, um, basically only connected to this side of the bus. It is a peripheral, but because it's um, a large card, I had to um, also connect it to the CPU side, but it really has nothing to do with the CPU. It's, um, this card here has a UART, uh, which is the uh, 80, 8251 UART there, which is responsible for communicating with um, other peripherals uh, that support RS-232, um, including that includes a, a terminal. And then over here, we have an IO chip. It's the actual 6526, which is used in the Commodore 64. Um, I, I chose that chip because it's got more functionality than just an IO um, chip it actually has uh, two 16-bit uh, counters uh, timers and also has um, a shift register and it's got some uh, uh, real-time clock circuitry which I don't really use uh, it's, the top pin here is actually the top IO pin is connected to a speaker so I can actually make simple sounds
Now I will turn on the computer so you can see it running. Um, if I stop the clock, it's running too quickly, so you can't see what's on the uh, data bus at the moment. But if I stop the clock, you can see what's on the data bus. There we go. It's running at one megahertz, so it's way too quick. Now here we are um, at my laptop. Now my laptop is actually connected up to the computer that I've built using a null modem cable. Uh, the null modem cable runs from this, this laptop to the UART uh, chip, which is the 8251 located on my computer. Now what I'll do is I can open up a, a program called Realterm, which is a terminal emulator. This terminal emulator can also send data through the serial port, which is really handy in this case. Just set it to ANSI, and I change the port to 9600 board. And I'll just change the display to 24 rows. Now we can send through a file. Now. We've got the obligatory uh, hello world. I just open that up and send it through. Oops, I'll just stop that. I've got to turn on the computer first. Uh, there we go. That's the startup message. It says my 6502 homebrew microprocessor. Now it's not really a microprocessor. It's more of a mini computer, but um, I think I'll stick with that for the time being. And I'll send through hello world again. There we go, the ubiquitous hello world. Uh, now just reset that. We can open up um, hello world using a hex editor. Just open that up. Now all my programming is done using a hex editor at the moment. I'm using uh, machine code. This computer would be able to use any 6502 assembler I just haven't come around to it yet you can see this uh, instruction here EA which is a no op uh, I can actually change that into a software interrupt this is zero zero which I can use as a breakpoint I'll just save this again and I'll just send that through again Now you can see this time it's actually gone into a, uh, a debugger or mini monitor and you can see it's got the address, the address bus there, the contents of the address bus, it's got the status register, um, it's got the accumulator, the X and Y registers and also the stack pointer. Now I can also peek into memory, for instance if I go to 0000, which is the uh, we'll show the first 16 bytes of zero page. There we go. It's just uh, garbage in there at the moment. Now I can also um, check out a whole page. Uh, if I go, for instance, 0, 0200 to 0300. 0, there you can see that's my uh, program there for the Hello World. Now what is really handy is you can also do single step which is great for debugging for instance if you press an s and there we go it will um, run one line of code at a time so if we continue this you can you can see it's gone to fd in the stack pointer that's because just over here we have a jump to subroutine at um, 0 to 60 the reason why it's 6002 is because this is uh, a little Indian um, architecture. Now you can see how it's um, uh, written uh, a H uh, into into zero zero d zero. That's the actual uh, address map for my UR, and it's got the H there. And if we continue, you got the E. L etc etc now we can also return to the main program by putting RET but of course it'll just um, hit the breakpoint again okay now I will show 
show everyone another program that I've um, that I'm working on. It's still a work in progress, but it utilizes the I/O port of my computer. Uh, let me just reset the computer first. Now I'll send that through. Now you can see I'm using a joystick for this. So you can actually move the defender ship and you can shoot you can shoot the enemies there. I'll see. If, there we go. And if finally the the enemy ships hit the um, defender ship, the program will stall. I haven't gone any further with that. I'll just reset that and I'll show you another version, which is an earlier version, but it runs a lot smoother. Um, this is quite jerky and I think one of the reasons is because uh, this is running at 9600 board, which is quite slow. I'll just um, load up another program, send that through. As you can see, it's a very simple version of the first one, the first one I showed you, but uh, it's a lot smoother. And I'll just show you what happens if I hit that ship, uh, if I can get it. Now oh, there we go. It makes a beeping noise. Uh, that's because my computer has a speaker also connected up to the I.O. port. And I can use the two 16-bit timers um, on the I.O. chip to the 6526 to make the, the different sounds. Okay, I'll just reset that. Well, thank you for watching this video. I hope you find it entertaining or at least interesting. And um, we'll see you next time.